As researchers and inventors, you discover new knowledge, create new ideas, and generate IP. As innovators and entrepreneurs, you have to translate your ideas into commercial value, and that's a different ballgame. That requires the design of an effective business model. So what is a business model? A business model is the way a company organizes itself to create, deliver, and capture value. In other words, it's the way you take your ideas or your IP as inputs and translate them into economic outputs. So let's talk about those three important verbs, create value. Create value requires that you design a unique value proposition and you establish product market fit. Delivering value is about establishing effective sales and service channels so that you can reach customers in a way that works for them and is cost effective for you. Capturing value is about defining an, a relevant revenue model that customers will embrace and that extracts the kind of economic value you need to fuel the business. In the book Business Model Generation, Alex Osterwalder helped take the abstract concept of a business model and make it more concrete and manageable by introducing the business model canvas. So here you can see the business model canvas laid out in nine building blocks. These building blocks are independent components and they're also very interdependent. The beauty of the business model canvas is that it helps you systematically identify and test all your relevant assumptions regarding your business design. So where do we begin? We should begin in the center and to the right with the big strategic question, should we build a business at all? If we can't establish that we have a unique value proposition that customers willing to pay for and validate that we have product market fit, we probably shouldn't be building a business at all. So that's the first important question that we have to ask by looking at those building blocks. Then if we do establish that we have product market fit, we wanna to shift to the left side of the canvas and ask the second strategic question, can we build a business? Can we actually develop the infrastructure, resources, and capabilities that we'll need to be able to deliver our value proposition in a cost-effective way? So as we answer those two strategic questions, we are really developing our plan before the plan. We don't want to develop an elaborate business plan with detailed financial forecasts and market forecasts until we first establish that we have a truly viable business model. So as we look at this view of the business model canvas, what you see here is that in each and every block of the nine blocks, there's one fundamental question that we'll have to be able to answer in order to establish a viable business. So what I'd like to do is walk you through each of those questions and introduce you to that fundamental question that you're going to have to answer as you explore the viability of your business. We start in the center with the value proposition. This is building block one. And remember, this is not about the list of technical features of your product. This is all about the customer and the unique and differentiated value that you can quantify and demonstrate to your customer. So you start by articulating that value proposition. Next, we move to the right side of the canvas and building block two customer segments. This is where we identify the specific and unique customer roles or segments that we hope to be able to sell our value proposition to. And here it's important to remember that if you have multiple customer segments or you identify multiple customer segments, you should list each of them in the, value, in the customer segments block of your canvas. And then it's important to test whether those segments have common or different uh, pains, problems, and desired gains that they're trying to solve. If they have different needs, then your value proposition will probably have to be adapted or at least marketed differently. That's customer segment number two. Number three, once you've got the customers identified, you understand their pains and gains, you've got a value proposition to deliver to those customers, how will you actually reach the customers? You need a channel strategy. Now there are many channels that you could potentially use. Will you sell online? Will you sell through a retailer, through a brick and mortar storefront? Will you sell through a distributor or other sort of value added dealer or intermediary? lots of different options. The key is to balance what the customers prefer and how they can easily be reached with the right return on investment for your overall sales channel strategy. How can you expand your reach and most efficiently as possible touch as many customers as you can so that it's easy for them to get access to your product or your service. 
Building block four, the customer relationships. It's expensive to acquire a new customer. So in this building block, we have to think about not just how do we reach them, but how do we get them, keep them, and grow them over time. We don't want to lose them after they initially express interest. We want to keep those customers and then grow their business. So what are the touch points or the ways that we connect over time with the customers to help ensure that they don't go to a competitor and where appropriate they actually either buy again or they upgrade from the initial purchase decision that they've made. We need a deliberate strategy for that. Then in building block five, how will we make money? So let's assume we have the value proposition the customers want, we're reaching them effectively through our channels, and we have a relationship management strategy that's working, how do we make money? This isn't initially how much they pay, this is how will they pay. So for example, are you selling an asset? That's an asset sell, do they actually buy the product from you? Or will you need a model where they rent or lease the product or service on a monthly basis? Or maybe you've got a freemium model where they get to try it for free for some period of time and then they have to make a decision to upgrade and start paying for it or they can upgrade for premium services. These are all different types of revenue models and we have to figure out which ones the customer is most compelled by so that we can make the, the model attractive to them and then we have to test whether or not we, how we price the, the product in that model to be able to balance them, their willingness to buy and our ability to generate acceptable revenue. So now we've looked at the right side of the model. The questions start to become, can we actually build that business effectively? And that starts with building block six, key resources. What would be the key resources we would need to deliver our value proposition? This includes human, financial, intellectual, and physical resources. So what talent will you need in terms of people? What intellectual property or expertise might you need? What financial resources, either through a loan or through some sort of investment, might you need to get this off the ground? And what physical resources? Maybe space, may include computing equipment or other types of equipment or manufacturing capacity. These are all the critical resources that will be required to actually deliver on your value proposition. Once you know what those are, in building block seven, it's important to ask the question, which of these key deliverables should we rely on partners to be able to help with? So partners can play a very, very valuable role, typically for one of three reasons. They can give us expertise, reach, or flexibility. So the first thing you might rely on a partner for is they have capability or expertise that you don't have. For instance, you might not have distribution capability, but UPS, FedEx, Uber delivers, there's lots of partners who can actually deliver things for you. Why build all that additional cost structure and take the time to build that capability if you can rely on a partner? Similarly, there might be manufacturers who have invested in the capital to manufacture more effectively and efficiently than you could. That's expertise. Reach. Channel partners, for example, may have great reach. Many, many customers go through Best Buy stores every single day. So maybe you want to partner with Best Buy as a channel partner to make sure that your product is visible to the many customers pursuing electronic products and solutions. And then finally, flexibility. If you have to build it and own it and maintain it, you have an ongoing set of requirements and expenses. If you can rent it and pay as you go, pay UPS to deliver every time you actually sell something, you have strategic flexibility. So those are all great reasons to consider partners doing critical tasks for you. You know what the jobs are to be done, the key resources required, you know what partners can do for you, now what do you have to do yourself? What is the most important differentiating value proposition that you have and what will you have to do yourself? This might include research and development, it might include production, sales and marketing, distribution, but typically, it's the core differentiating capability that you have to own and protect that you'll want to do yourself and then rely on partners to do the rest. And nine, the ninth building block is we now have a sense of the product market fit, the value we're delivering to which customers through what revenue model. We have a sense of the work to be done, what we'll do ourselves, what our partners will do for us. Now we have to look at the final element, the cost structure. 
Now this is more than just the total cost. We of course have to have a total cost which is acceptable given the estimated revenue that we can realize. But there's another important consideration here we should take into account and that is fixed versus variable costs. Especially as an emerging business, you want to minimize where possible your fixed costs. These are costs that you now have to pay on an ongoing basis regardless of whether or not you have orders for your product. Variable costs give you flexibility to not have to make payments and owe money to others if you're not selling. So for example, having a manufacturing par partner who builds when you have orders, having a distributor who delivers when you have orders, hiring a contractor versus a regular employee. These are all ways to build variable cost structure versus fixed cost structure, and that can add real value to your business model. So those are the nine building blocks and the essential question you'll want to ask in each one of them. Here's another version of the Business Model Canvas that you can see has a number of questions. This is a bit of a deeper dive and we'll provide this as a resource. So as you're working through your business model, start with the essential question and then you may want to reference this tool to look at the additional questions that are worth considering. You know, at this point you recognize that innovation is iterative and messy inherently. So it's probably no surprise that designing a business model is also an iterative and messy process. As you can see here, there's a couple of tools that help you manage this messy process. There are digital templates available that let you digitally edit, modify, and adapt your business design assumptions. That makes it more dynamic and flexible and easier to use. Or you might just go with good tried and true post-it notes or stickies. That gives you the chance every time you learn something to update your business model in a very dynamic way and keep your team calibrated on the assumptions as they change. And lastly, I want to mention again the Business Model Generation book. It's a great go-to resource when you need some extra help thinking about each of the elements in the business model itself. So with that, I wish you good luck as you go out and start the search for your viable business model.